friend what is Good evening and welcome to the Paddle Australia Awards 2020. I'm Louise Ransom, your MC for tonight. Thank you so much for joining us for this digital version of the annual awards for the Australian paddling community. Being online means this is the first time everyone in paddling can be part of the awards. The first time you're all in the room, so to speak. Tonight, we really are focused on the community level of sport, the people who keep clubs going, the volunteers, the coaches and instructors, the competition officials and the event managers, people who are the backbone of paddling. We've got some exciting awards to announce, plus we'll hear from Paddle Australia President Andrea McQuitty and CEO Phil Jones. We encourage you to share comments, congratulations and join in the fun by commenting on Facebook and also sharing photos of how you're enjoying the show at home. Post your photos on Instagram and use the hashtag PaddleOzAwards20. Now we all know it's been a challenging year. Many of the elite paddling competitions were cancelled, the Olympics postponed and many clubs have had to close during lockdown. 
For the most part, paddlers have been lucky to be able to continue to get out on the water, maintaining social distancing, of course. And before we get into the formalities, let's take a quick look at what it's all about, enjoying the water. Yep, kayaks, surf skis, canoes, stand-ups, it doesn't matter how you do it. There's no doubting the freedom and joy of being out there on the water. Let's get these awards moving for tonight. Joining me in the studio this evening is Paddle Australia CEO, Phil Jones. Phil, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Louise, and uh, good evening, everyone. Great to have you all with us uh, here this evening. Um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet here in Sydney, we're on the land of the Gagal people of the Aurora Nation. And I acknowledge the traditional owners of the broad and varied lands on which everyone from the paddling community is watching this evening and recognise their continuing connection to the land, waters and culture. I'd also like to pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Well, what an extraordinary year it's been. <clears throat> Bushfires, floods, pandemic, but we know that there's nothing quite like getting out on the water. So before the awards begin, I would like to acknowledge the resilience, the adaptability and care of the paddling community shown in recent months. The vision of Paddle Australia is for a united paddling community. And we've seen that community in action as paddling has been limited, our clubs have closed and reopened, and sadly, of course, in Victoria, only to shut down again. And it's great to see the restrictions in Victoria starting to lift again. We know how important exercise and physical activity is to people's health and well-being, and there's nothing quite like getting out on the water. Paddle Australia and the Eight Paddle Associations have been able to play our role in keeping people paddling pretty much throughout this pandemic. And this has only been possible because of the sensible way you, our community, have responded to the restrictions. The approach we've all taken has kept people safe and allowed everyone to benefit from the freedom we enjoy. I dare say we'll all take that freedom just a little less for granted as a result of what we've been through, particularly over the past six months. Now, whilst things seem to be improving, we do need to remember that this unfortunately is not over yet. So please continue to act with caution and stay safe. Now, it was about this time 12 months ago that we gathered together to acknowledge the 2019 performances of athletes domestically and internationally, and the contributions made, of course, by people to paddling in Australia more widely. Names like Jessica Fox, Curtis McGrath, Jasmine Shipway Carr. Our president was even able to render Jez speechless when he received the prestigious President's Award. And when COVID-19 hit, we spent quite a bit of time trying to understand what our award should really try and reflect in this most unusual of years. For some time, we've been considering ways to better recognise those many dedicated people that continue to contribute to paddling day in, day out. Those people we all know, but without whom paddling would simply be unable to operate. So after discussion with our state paddle associations, we landed on the format that brings us all here this evening. The idea also had the enthusiastic support of our Athletes Commission, who saw that there was really not a lot of value in performance awards when there was very little opportunity to perform. So as well as the established awards of services to paddling, life membership and the President's Award, this evening we acknowledge the instructors and guides 
Club coaches and volunteers that have won their state paddle awards, all deserving finalists here this evening. We then gave our hard-working honours committee the very difficult task of picking a winner in each category. Difficult at the best of times, but particularly given the contributions of all our finalists here this evening. And I would like to acknowledge the very hard-working honours committee and tonight rather than than me. So before we get into it, I'd just like to thank everyone that really has made this evening possible. Our state paddle associations must have rolled their eyes when we first came up with this idea and your cooperation and support particularly are much appreciated. So Louise, without further ado, it's on with the show. Thank you very much, Phil. Let's get to our first award for tonight and it's the Club Coach of the Year. This is a new category awarded to any club coach whose athletes have achieved outstanding outcomes during the year. These outcomes aren't limited to just competition results. They also include participation and inclusion within the paddling community. The finalists for 2020, Tony Heistek and Bob Turner from Paddle New South Wales. Jason Keating from Sunshine Coast Paddle Sports Club Queensland. Alex Boyd of Fairfield Canoe Club Victoria. Andrew Crothers from Bayswater Paddle Sports Club Western Australia. Matt Dalziel of Derwent Canoe Club Tasmania. And Dale Thompson from Okaparinga Canoe Club South Australia. Now, to announce our winner, please welcome Canoe Sprint and Canoe Marathon Australia representative, Jesse Phillips. I'm pleased to announce the winner of the Club Coach of the Year Award from strengthening the local coaching network here in Perth through his junior squads, masters groups and talent development to his work overseas in developing structure for a state run program. He is a capable and adventurous multi-sport athlete who is equally skilled in ocean paddling, marathon sprint and whitewater, an inspiration for upcoming paddlers in WA, providing safe opportunities for inexperienced paddlers to expand their paddling horizons in both ocean and whitewater. His coaching style is engaging and holistic. He sees the value of paddling as much um, about health and community as it is about competition and performance. And WA is very grateful for the benefit that he contributes to the paddling community here. And it is my pleasure to announce that the Club Coach of the Year Award goes to Andrew Crothers from Bayswater Paddle Sports Club here in WA. Congratulations, Andrew. Yes, big congratulations to Andrew. Let's go into a little about what you've done as a development coach. Bayswater Paddle Sports Club, Andrew created a stable, fun environment with a particular emphasis on personal and team accountability. In the past year, his squad has increased in size to around 20 athletes, with members going on to earn selection in Junior World Championships and Olympic Hopes teams. Andrew promotes participation and excellence across multiple disciplines, whether flat, open or white water, and he hosts a camp each year to provide white water opportunities to younger paddlers. He encourages a pure love for paddling, all the while modelling the behaviours which are to be expected in a club coach. Andrew joins us now. Andrew, a big congratulations to you. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is it that you find most rewarding about coaching? Uh, just the athletes, working with the athletes, getting to help them. Um, and yeah, seeing them improve is, is just, um, yeah, it's, it's really rewarding. Yeah. And what do you look forward to in the future? What do you want to in implement as you go ahead? Uh, yeah, just keep making athletes better, hopefully, and trying to get uh, grow the, the sport of paddling in, over here in WA and just help out wherever I can. Um, and, yeah, just trying to keep making people better, I guess. Andrew Crothers, you're doing an amazing job. Congratulations again on the award tonight. Okay, congratulations to Andrew there. Let's move to our next award and it's Services to Paddling. This award recognises the efforts of non-professional, non-sporting personnel active in paddling administration, training and education, project or team management and association of club development at state or national level for more than 10 years. Now, this honour is awarded to extremely dedicated people within the sport in recognition of everything they do to make paddling in Australia what it is today. Now to announce our winner, please welcome 2016 Rio Paralympic gold medalist, Curtis McGrath. I'm pleased to announce the winner of the Services to Paddling Award. This person has made a huge contribution to our sport. 
and has always taken the bad starts with the good. In paddling, she has gone from one position to the next and has always made sure that the athletes have the best chance to perform. Next year, she will join the Paracanoe athletes at the Tokyo Paralympic Games, where she will be in the heart of the action as a deputy chief judge at the Paracanoe events, and I hope to be able to join her there. The winner this year is Laura White from New South Wales. Congratulations, Laura. A big congratulations to Laura. Let me share some of the details about Laura's achievements. Laura's involvement in paddling spans more than 30 years of volunteering as an official event organiser on technical committees, in team support and as an international official. From her early days as a 13-year-old volunteer, Laura has scaled the heights of international sport with roles such as High Performance Program Coordinator at the 2004 Athens Olympic Games, Australian and New South Wales Sprint Race Technical Committees, Australian Official at Senior World Cups, World Masters Games and Junior World Championships. In 2019, Laura was selected as Australia's first paddling official to attend the Paralympic Games. Laura, the list just goes on and on. Congratulations. Uh, how do you feel about winning this award? Oh, it's utterly thrilling, man. That list sounds amazing when you say it like that. <laughs> 30 years. That is a long time to be involved in a sport. Why do you love it so much? Uh, I've always been a, a water baby and my dad kind of chose canoeing when he could no longer sail and that was it for the family, really. Unfortunately for my poor sister, she's not involved, but mum, dad and I were all officials for many years, so we enjoyed that together. It was great. So being around the sport for so long, how have you seen paddling in Australia grow and change? Oh, completely. When I started, it was very much grassroots. We had a tent that we'd run races from, you know, the old Victorian Amateur Canoe Association days. Um, you know, it's, it was in the manual days. There was no computers. Progressions were done manually on paper. So it's, you know, the advent of, um, you know, the digital age in the sport has made the most amazing difference to the sport. And I still think there's so many strides to be made in the sport, and that's all disciplines. What about you? What sort of strides do you want to make? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> that's very long. Um, I'd certainly love to see the, the volunteer official base in Australia regrow. We used to have so many and they've, shall I say, aged out of the, the sport. So we certainly need a, you know, a greater influx to keep the quality of the, um, our competitions here in our backyard for our athletes. Yeah, well said, Laura. Congratulations again on tonight's award. Thank you very much. Yeah, great to speak to Laura there. Now, as she mentioned, volunteers are the core of any sport and paddling and is no exception, really. Tonight, Paddle Australia is honouring one dedicated person as Volunteer of the Year, a new award category for 2020. The award is presented to an individual who has demonstrated a tireless commitment to volunteering within the sport at club or state organisation level. The finalists are Eileen Callahan of Penrith Valley Canoeing, New South Wales, Ascot Kayak Club Course Instructors, Western Australia, Delia West from Sunshine Coast Paddle Sports Club, Queensland, Anna Taylor of Ballarat Amateur Canoe Club, Victoria, Russell Horton from the Tasmanian Canoe Club and Kerry Sachs of Westlakes Canoe Club, South Australia. Now, to announce the inaugural winner of Volunteer of the Year, please welcome three-time World Cup champion and head coach of the Australian Freestyle Kayak Team, Jez. Hey, thank you, Lou, for this opportunity to present this award. I appreciate it. Volunteers are such an important aspect of paddle sports in Australia. Without volunteers, there would be no competition at all, and it'd be a completely different community. Within the whitewater and freestyle community in Australia, there is one volunteer that has gone above and beyond to develop every level and aspect of the sport for almost a decade. From developing grassroots, including kids at the pool, to the self-proclaimed Wrinkley's older crew at Penrith, to even flipping snags at fundraisers, to supporting the Australian elite freestyle kayaking national team, she's helped make the sport inviting and accessible for literally everyone. She gives up her time every week, all year round, and puts everyone before herself to ensure that the community and the paddlers have the best access to whitewater and freestyle as possible. Eileen epitomises what a volunteer is. She's a true asset to the Australian paddling community and I can't think of a more deserving person. Congratulations to the 2020 
Paddle Australia Volunteer of the Year, Eileen Callahan. Here she is over here. Let's All right, ladies and gentlemen, I just the 2020 Volunteer of the Year Award. She wears multiple hats currently. She's actually out here volunteering at the Penrith Nepean uh, Centre to help kids and people get out on the water during the winter times. Eileen, we appreciate everything you do. You've done so much for the community and um, tirelessly, week in, week out, day in, day out, you do so much for kayaking in Australia. And as a result, we would like to present you your fantastic award. Here it is, ah. live, coming to you live from Penrith. Here is the 2020 Volunteer of the Year, Eileen Callahan. Oh Let's give it up, my Eileen. Woo! There's so many other kids that just better in the media. I know how much time I've got to other people's kids. So congratulations to all the other kids. Thank, thank you so much. And cheers, this is a good one. <laughs> yeah, we didn't tell her. All right, thank you guys. Back to you, Lou. Appreciate you checking in. Thank you so much to Jez there. Big congratulations to Eileen as well. Not a night off uh, for her. She is still going on a Friday night. Uh, let me share some of the background information to you guys watching on about Eileen. In five years as chair of Paddle New South Wales Freestyle, Eileen has overseen and brought in many new initiatives, including a girl's introduction to freestyle program. She's dramatically grown fundraising and has increased sponsorship of the junior development program with local sporting grants. And as a result of Eileen's efforts, the fleet of junior sized boats has grown. She's been the organiser behind all Paddle New South Wales Freestyles events and was the national team manager of the 2017 World Championship campaign. Her welcoming spirit, which we saw a little snippet of there, is spread through the sport and everyone, young and old, and sees Eileen as the glue which holds the community together. So it was so great to uh, talk to Eileen and Jez live from the Penrith Aquatic Centre in Sydney. She's been running that uh, kayak pool session tonight. Uh, great to, to see them in action there live for us here on the Paddle Australia Awards. Uh, let's move on to the next uh, award. It's the Life Membership Award. Life Membership is the highest honour that can be bestowed by Paddle Australia. It recognises long-standing and valued service to the sport in Australia. And two people will be announced as Life Members tonight. And to tell us who they are, it's my pleasure to welcome back Paddle Australia CEO, Phil Jones. Thank you, Louise. And uh, our first recipient tonight has provided over 30 years of dedicated service to the sport. He's been involved with Paddle South Australia regattas for, um, since 1992 and Australian championships in both sprint and marathon as a key official. <clears throat> He's had a variety of roles at national level, including membership of the what was then Australian Canoeing Board from 1997 to 2001. In 2010, he received the Services to Sport Award, even at that stage, recognising more than 20 years of service. One of his most noteworthy achievements was the 20, oh, 23, years, 23 years spent as the event director of the Riverland uh, Paddling Marathon, which during his involvement has grown into a significant national event. He's one of the most enthusiastic volunteers within the sport, often seen performing those numerous thankless tasks behind the scenes. He's a life member of Paddle Australia and his home club, Holdfast Bay uh, Paddle Sport, uh, um, where he's been president, vice president, treasurer, and a committee member, um, but I'm told not all at the same time. So our first recipient of the PA life membership this evening and those from South Australia will already know, is Martin Finn. Congratulations, Martin. Thank you. To Martin Finn. Martin, thank you so much for joining us for these awards. Uh, tell me, what does this award mean to you? Oh, it's another, uh, another milestone in my life, I suppose. You know, when you think about the years I've been involved with, I spent 20 years in athletics before I joined uh, canoeing and I got into canoeing and got very much involved right from the word go with the late brother Howard from Kutzen Brothers College with Mark O'Brien. And then I got very much involved with Australian Canoe with Helen Brownlee. And that was important to me because uh, Helen was so inspirational about what she was committed to the sport. And hopefully I brought the same commitment. 
the Riverland Battling Marathon has been, um, my wife first did it. It was one rescue boat. There was no safety. There was no first aid. And I thought, this is not going to be the way it's going to be moving forward. So that's why I got involved with that. And it's totally recognised as one of the fun events with the control measures just very set and very rigid about the way I myself think it should be run. So I certainly, yeah. Certainly. Go on, oh, sorry. No, that's okay. I was going to say you spoke about the Riverland Paddling Marathon. You took it from small beginnings to a national event. Tell me about that process and the challenges well, that you experienced <laughs> along the way. 200, 100 uh, um, kilometre events and they had probably lack of probably 55 people doing it. Uh, at the highlight a couple of years ago, in the 20th year, we had something like 180 competitors with over 110 craft. And that was because I decided to not only run the 200, we also had the 200 relay. We also had the 100. We also had the, the M50, which is um, two short distances on the first and third day. And on the second day, they do the distance at the 100, which is 29 k's. And then I broke it down to the mini, which they do 11 k's every day. And then I did the single day event. So the event, <coughs> the 200 basically is evolved that we've got all these other little events involved with it. And that's been very rewarding when it comes to people come up and say, oh, look, I've decided I was going to do the 200, but I'm not fit enough. I've been sick. Can I do the 100? And we're flexible enough to do that. So from that point of view, it's certainly, I think it, it, the team behind me are brilliant. And a lot of them paddle as well. So it, when you say, listen, you go off and paddle, but I need you to do this before you go. So from that point of view, it's been very important. And, and at a, a next event, I thank the New South Wales and Victorian colleagues because they're the ones that come and compete in the 200. Martin, and we've put... seen... You put so much effort into the sport. Uh, I want to say a big congratulations to you for this Life Membership Award. It's such a great achievement. Thank you so much for your time here on the Paddle Australia Awards tonight. Thank you to Paddle Australia. Yeah, congratulations again to Martin. Now, Phil is another recipient of this Life Member Award. Tell, tell us about him. There, there is indeed, Louise. Um, uh, our second recipient for life membership <clears throat> has a long list of accomplishments to his name, but I'm just going to touch on some of the highlights. He's a dedicated volunteer and a representative of club, state and national level since about 1994. Um, in the state of Queensland, he served on the marathon committee and on the board of Queensland, receiving their life membership in 2009. At national level, He's received the Paddle Australia Services Award in 2009 and has chaired the Paddle Australia Canoe Marathon Technical Committee since 2008. Um, he is a member of the Paddle Australia Honours Committee, but I can assure you he had absolutely no involvement in the deliberations about this award. He regularly officiates at world, national and state championships and he's respected amongst his peers for his professional approach and his commitment to the, de to the development of marathon paddling in Australia is unwavering. He is indeed the marathon man. So it gives me great pleasure to announce this evening that Jerry Dunn is a life member of Paddle Australia. Congratulations, Jerry. Thank you. Jerry, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Congratulations from me as well. Tell me, how do you feel about receiving that award? Uh, yes, it's very unexpected um, and one that um, I probably wouldn't have thought that I should uh, have until a few years yet um, because uh, I'm still quite young. Well, I consider myself young. Uh, and there's a long way to go with uh, not only with Canoe Marathon in Australia, but also with Paddle Australia and its development across the states. That's a good mindset to be in. Uh, you volunteered and officiated at nearly every marathon and sprint event since the year 2000. What is it that you love most about this sport? It, the best thing is actually seeing people achieve. Um, sometimes you see the, the bad sides where people just, um, you know, they may not necessarily achieve what they set out to do, but you actually see people achieve the hard work that people uh, 
are doing and uh and no that's just getting out and about and uh enjoying it with everybody else and jerry i feel like you've uh specifically worn that lovely maroons jersey <laughs> i have also worn maroon tonight i'm a queenslander too so there we go we'll um we'll bond over that <laughs> uh, absolutely <laughs> It's just about to kick off on Wednesday, so we can Who's only your know. tip? Oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard with a fresh Queensland team, but uh, I hope they put in a good show. Mm, okay, well done. Um, now, tell me a little bit more about paddling, and if you're talking to someone in the street and you're trying to get them into paddling or sell the sport of paddling to them, what do you say to them? Basically, they have to try it, and um, sometimes they have to try a boat that they're comfortable in first, and a boat that they need to uh, make sure that it's stable, and then they just um, continue on with uh, with it. And it's got a, it is a little bit of a uh, a sport where you have to maintain a little bit of persistence because it will pay off, and then you can get into the faster boats. You've been quite lucky in Queensland to uh, experience, I guess, the less lockdowns than other states around Australia with COVID. What sort of adjustments did you have to make or did you see happening with people getting out on the water? Uh, I did actually attend uh, one of the races here recently and uh, the club that ran that race uh, did a very, very good job with their COVID controls the COVID safe practices for the event and everything else. Uh, I probably haven't been uh, as close to the water as I probably should have been, but um, I have been there to try and assist with the development of some of the officials uh, up here in Queensland. Okay, well, really appreciate your time this evening and congratulations, Jerry, again on receiving such a great award and thank you for your contribution. Thank you very much. It's much appreciated. Great to talk to Jerry. Congratulations again to him. Uh, now to the Instructor or Guide of the Year Award. This award is presented to someone who has provided outstanding instruction or guiding service in paddling at any level. It's presented to someone who follows Paddle Australia safety guidelines, demonstrates professionalism and promotes engagement within the paddling community. The finalists this year are Laura Stone of Paddle New South Wales, Jeffrey John Emery from Swan Canoe Club and Sea Kayak Club, Western Australia, Gary Brannan of Bendigo Canoe Club, Victoria, Vicky Bonwick from Derwent Canoe Club, Tasmania, and Jim Townsend of Adelaide Canoe Club, South Australia. Now, to announce our winner, we're joined by Peter Eckhart in Tasmania. It's a great pleasure for me to announce tonight the winner of this award. It's the Instructor and Guide of the Year Award. This person is known really well to me. I am really pleased that uh, she's won the award, a great volunteer in our club. Um, she's a lady who's set up a great ritual in our club, our under three Whitewater River trip, which we do on the same weekend of every month of the year. This uh, instructor, she spends a lot of time, a lot of volunteer time, teaching adults to paddle, making sure they're safe and making sure that the skills in the group, the safety skills are really good and ensuring that the trips that they do are really safe. So I'm really pleased to announce that Vicky Bonwick has won the Instructor and Guide of the Year Award. Well done, Vicky. Thank you very much to Peter there and a big congratulations to Vicky. Let me tell everyone about Vicky. Vicky considers instructing part of giving back to a sport of paddling. She has initiated and led many development programs, including the Derwent Canoe Club's Under Three Group, which encourages adult paddlers to develop skills and participate in paddling easy and moderate grade whitewater rivers. Vicky's teaching style is highly regarded and she continues to develop her own knowledge. She's known as supportive, inclusive and encouraging of those she teaches. Vicky, congratulations on the award. Tell me uh, what this means to you. Um, it's, it's actually great to um, see Paddle Australia recognise some different values other than sporting. So I'm really appreciative that this world exists for starters 
And uh, yeah, it means a lot to me, but also I have to have a big shout out while I get the chance of every other peer in who's ever helped me on a gazillion of our sessions. So it's not just me, it's a whole team effort. Um, so it does mean a lot that you guys value recreational paddling. It's the people. You've got a few mates there in the background. Are you having a bit of a party? No. Yeah. <laughs> Life members, coaches, <laughs> supporting crew. Yeah, nice one. And I guess that's probably the one of the benefits of doing an awards night in this format. You get to all sit on the couch, watch it from home, feel involved. Was this uh, always the, the plan for this evening? Uh, no. Uh, Paddle <laughs> Tasmania. <laughs> They crashed my place. <laughs> <laughs> and bought a pizza, so I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, nice one. Um, tell me about this under three group that you got started. What that? What is that all about? And where did you? Why did you see a gap that that needed to be created? I I have to recognise David Bevan in Northern Tasmania who did start the under threes in Northern Tasmania, and I thought, wow, that's a fantastic idea. So five years ago. I picked it up and ran with it down here. And it is such a fantastic idea to have regular scheduled trips, no matter what the weather or the water level, so that people can schedule it in. Because the people that it serves are those entering into paddling, usually adults who haven't come by the normal pathways. So they need, they need a schedule. They need to know they're safe. They need to know going to learn a bit but have fun and it's a social group as well so it's a guarantee all of those things are guaranteed on a trip and they give your kids along as well and then you get the other pathways through to the other sporting side so the two sides sporting and adult introduction work well together okay and, and Vicky tell me what is it that you love about teaching um it can be a lot of fun, a lot of fun. <laughs> um, I, I guess, I mean, people taught me through my 30 years of paddling and so it's passing it on. But it's also, it's a social group. I love paddling. I don't want to paddle hard stuff anymore. I'm past that. I don't need to paddle hard stuff anymore. Uh, it's not just happy. I'm around on, as much on grade two as I am on three or four days on grade four. Um, so it's, it's social, yeah, it's just a, a peer group of paddlers and if I can make them feel better and happier at the same time, well, that's, that's a lot of satisfaction in there as well. Tasmania is such a beautiful place within Australia. Where is it that you most like going to or what, what trips have you got planned around the state and maybe once the borders reopen properly uh, on the mainland as well? Uh, I'm mainly a Tassie paddler. Uh, although with my pack raft, it's much easier to paddle to uh, travel now. <coughs> I'm plugging there for pack rafting. So half of my trips these days are pack rafting. So um, as far as great places to paddle go, look, Tasmania's got endless wonderful places. The Mersey River, any particular section of it, of course, the Franklin River um, are two biggies. As far as under threes goes, we do a lot of them on the Dunlop and the Huon. It's a guarantee grade one, grade two, you can pick any number of sections. Um, so they're, they're, they're just to name a few. Yeah, great. We're very lucky to live in such a beautiful place with so many options. And congratulations again, Vicky, on the award tonight. I dare say you've brought plenty of people happily through into the sport. So congratulations on that as well. Thank you. Yeah, great to chat to Vicky there with a entourage and party going on in Tasmania. Why not? Hey, on a Friday night. Uh, we've got one more award to announce this evening. It's the President's Award. And Paddle Australia President Andrea McQuitty has some thoughts to share and will announce the award recipient. Thank you for being with us for the 2020 Paddle Australia Awards. These awards are designed to honour the best of the paddling community and highlight the incredible contributions made by volunteers at all levels of the organisation. Tonight, as these awards have been presented, we've been able to see and hear about the positive impact made by so many people at all levels of the organisation. Congratulations to all the award winners and finalists. I know that the Honours and Awards Committee found selecting winners to be a very difficult task 
and I'd like to thank them for their efforts in doing so. I'd also like to thank the state paddle associations for managing the state-based awards for the first time. To our life members, Martin Finn and Jerry Dunn, this is well-deserved recognition for your service and commitment to paddling in Australia. You've joined a group of extraordinary individuals as life members. In what has been a challenging year, I'd also like to thank and acknowledge all the efforts of volunteers across paddling and the work done by people in the state associations and the Paddle Australia staff. Times of adversity do reveal who we really are. Across the past year, the paddling community has shown its resilience, adaptability and unity. We've stayed connected, worked collaboratively and shown compassion for those who've been adversely affected. It's been a year that has really highlighted how much value paddling adds to our lives as a way of maintaining our physical and mental well-being and staying connected to each other and the natural world. In choosing the recipient of the President's Award for this year, I considered all of these attributes and selected an event that excels in showcasing who we are as a paddling community and the benefit of paddling in our lives. The event is a series of three races that unifies a normally dispersed community of paddlers. It's an event formed through the collaborative efforts of many volunteers. The races are inclusive of paddlers from both elite and recreational paddling backgrounds, where Olympians compete against weekend enthusiasts, all sharing the same sense of adventure. In a year that has brought so much uncertainty on a daily basis, I could think of no better way to conclude the paddling year than to celebrate this part of our paddling community who live by seizing the day and turning it into an adventure. Above all, this event is an expression of the joy of paddling in wild places with your friends. This year, the President's Award goes to the Australian Whitewater Grand Prix. Thank you very much to Andrea. James Thorpe is with us to accept the award on behalf of everyone involved in the Australian Whitewater Grand Prix. James, congratulations. What would you like to say on behalf of everyone? Uh, thanks, Louise. Uh, we are very honoured, um, everyone here at the Grand Prix. Um, I guess I'm accepting this uh, award collectively. Um, I started the event many moons ago with the Lee Extreme Race in Northwest Tasmania, and it has grown since then um, and uh, gained gained a lot of traction. And uh, now we have a triple event, both uh, on the Lee, uh, the North Esk in Tasmania, and then the Snowy Race in uh, Victoria. So, as a uh, as I am collectively accepting this award on behalf of a, of a large host of, of, of volunteers and organisers and people, um, I would like to thank a few few people in the community. Um, to the people that organise the Lee Race now, uh, to Tasmanian Canoe Club and all the good people that are, that are in the Tasmanian Canoe Club, uh, they are close to my heart because I grew up in uh, northwest Tasmania and that was my canoe club. Um, to Daniel Harris, who is uh, the key man there in organising it. Um, to the people from Tamar Canoe Club that organised the, uh, the North Esk race. And then to the people in Victoria that organised the Snowy race. Um, and then another person that organised, took over from me when I, when I exited organising the Lee race was Lee Whiten from Kayak Foreplay. He uh, ran the Lee race uh, for many, many years uh, in Tasmania. So... Um, congratulations should go to Lee, yeah, too. And tell me about the future vision for this series. Where do you see it going? Uh, I think it'll probably just become a mainstay of, uh, of whitewater paddling in Australia. It's become a really uh, collective, collective gathering of, uh, of our whitewater community, which, which, is, which has always been the ethos between behind organising the first ever race and, uh, and then I think the races after that. Um, it's, not a, it's not about the race, it's about, um, you know, the racing is just a sideline to the community aspect and the, and the social aspect of, uh, 
of these three races. So I think they'll become a mainstay. The Lee race has become a mainstay. That's been, I organised that 17 years ago, which makes me sound old, but um, but uh, it's been going for a long while and, um, and doesn't seem to be faltering at all. You know, obviously there's been a delay this year, but I think next year you'll see it again and again because it is a, a coming together of, uh, of what would have paddlers from around the country. Um, I think, you know, Australia is such a big country that w often our whitewater communities and our paddling communities in general are in clusters. And so um, we have, you know, clusters of whitewater paddlers in Penrith, in North Queensland, in Victoria, in Tasmania, it's very active. Um, and events like this really bring that community together. And so, uh, so it's terrific that they, they have established a firm, um, um, a firm foothold now and uh, will hopefully continue into the future. Of this evening has been people involved with the sport for um, many numbers of years. What is it that drags people in in the first place and keeps them involved? Well, I think... Um, you know, there's there's all for, for whitewater community and, and, and whitewater paddling, you know, there's a, there's a thrill of the river, thrill of running whitewater, and it's the same probably for racing. It's the thrill of racing in the competitive aspect. Um, but I think ultimately us homo sapiens are social animals, and that is the crux to uh, why we've seen such success with the Grand Prix is that it's a social event. It's about people getting together, sitting around the campfire, sharing stories, uh, catching on with uh, mates that they only see once a year from other states. Um, and I think that will hold true in all these three races is it's a social event. Uh, it's not about the racing. Uh, it's, uh, that's just, a, again, just a side note. And um, it really is a gathering of community. And it's, and it's, it's festive in many respects. It's not, it's not hard racing. It's, uh, it's a festive boating, uh, boating event. Yeah. Me about COVID, how has that affected your community? Uh, I'm actually I I'm from Tassie originally, but I'm actually living in North Queensland, so we've been pretty immune to it up here. Um, there's not many tourists about, and the borders are obviously closed. But uh, life goes on. I get to paddle paddle most days, um, either on the sea or on uh, on whitewater. We're very lucky here in North Queensland because we have the Tully River and and a bunch of you know, really good grade four or five rivers are flowing and that we can access on a daily basis, which is very rare in our sunburnt country. And James, lastly, tell me about that shirt that is quite something for a Friday evening. Yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you. It's, uh, it's one of my favourite. Yeah, it's very colourful. It, get, it actually gets a lot of comments. <laughs> I bet it does. Well done. Looks good, James. Thanks so much. And thanks for speaking on behalf cool. of everyone this evening. Thank you very much. We're honoured. Yeah, great to speak to uh, James there about that. Uh, Phil doesn't have quite as uh, loud shirt on this evening, but Phil, I'd like to bring you back in and, and talk a little bit from your perspective before we end the awards night uh, for, the, for tonight. From your perspective, how difficult has it been navigating through COVID in 2020? I think we've had the same challenges as, as, as everybody else in that around the uncertainty that it creates in terms of, you know, what we're going to be able to do and when we're going to be able to do it. And at the beginning of COVID, I think there was, you know, some, some real concerns about some of our clubs and their ability to survive because, you know, they were, <clears throat> they were closing their doors. They were concerned about people returning to the sport. Um, and, and we took some steps quite early on with our paddle support package to, you know, provide a discount to, to members of clubs and um, look at other things that they could do during that period. So we had an introduction to coaching course. A lot of people actually took on, so they've now been able to go back out. And as people come back into the sport, they can provide some coaching support. So there's, there, was, there was that kind of support, but in a very practical way, obviously, you know, while some people haven't been impacted fortunately, by COVID in a significant way financially. Some have, and the community recognised that. So we've had in place a, a process for people actually being able to make contributions to a fund that's allowed us to pay their club memberships in some cases. And I think that's been really positive as well. So at the moment, we're, we're seeing good membership numbers in those states that are open, and hopefully, you know, Victoria is going to follow suit in the next few months. So um, 
a, a, a difficult time at, at sort of community level and, and clearly, obviously, at international level as well with the postponement of the Olympic Games. And I think our, our wish would be for this time next year that we're able to combine, obviously, um, you know, the recognition of the, uh, the enormous contribution of the volunteers we've heard from this evening, able to combine that with some, with some performance awards from our leading athletes that have had the opportunity to, again, travel to international events and obviously, you know, particularly the Olympic and Paralympic Games. Yes, we can only hope. And I guess that is one of the, the silver linings uh, within the event tonight as we have been able to recognise some wonderful contributions in the community. In terms of the, the more competitive side of the sport, where is it at at the moment and what do you have to do between now and hopefully Tokyo next year to get everything underway? Again, I think the, the, the challenge for us is still that uncertainty. And, uh, you know, we have, um, we're, we're fortunate for the Olympics that we already have a, a qualified team. So um, they are able to train, obviously, here and are doing. Um, what that training program is going to look like and what the competition calendar might look like internationally at this point, we, we really don't know. Um, and that obviously depends on what happens in the rest of the world as opposed to necessarily here. Um, so that's a, that's a positive for us. Our Paralympic athletes are, uh, are, sele are selected, but they need to be endorsed by the, uh, the Paralympic Committee. So that, on, on that basis, we're, we're, we're ready to go. And clearly the, the paddlers are chomping at the bit. Um, in, the, in the other disciplines, I mean, again, you know, so much depends on what happens here in the next few months. And, you know, if things continue as they are, we hope we'll be able to run national level competitions. Our challenge, of course, is that you wouldn't want to run a national competition if all the athletes weren't able to, to attend. And um, at the moment, you know, we're working on what that might look like from a Western Australian point of view, for example, who sound like they're going to close their borders to 2024 at the rate we're going. So those, those sorts of issues are, are things we're trying to address and, and I guess step through. So well, some announcement tonight, I think WA have softened some border in the last hour or two. So hopefully that allows people to move more freely within Australia. Um, from the community perspective, back to memberships, how have you seen that evolve? And how have you seen, I guess, the feedback from the community during this time when we have had different states in different types of lockdowns? Uh, look, uh, uh, various, I've been... Our various state paddle associations have responded really well to providing information to those people as that as that changes. I mean, it's fair to say it's been much harder coming out of lockdown than it ever was going in, in terms of managing social distancing and making sure clubs are COVID safe. But our clubs have done, and our volunteers at those clubs have done a remarkable job in the way they've responded, as I said earlier. So that's, that's, a, that's a real positive. And, you know, I think we'll We've all learned a lot from that, but as I said, I think, you know, probably the key takeout for everybody is, you know, uh, as paddlers, I think we, we, we take the, the opportunity to get on the water sometimes for granted. And it's, um, I, I think, you know, we all look at that now and go, it's, it's actually a privilege and it's something that I'm sure everybody recognises. Yes, I think so. Well said, Phil. Thank you so much for your contribution tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure. That brings the 2020 Paddle Australia Awards to a close. It's been a terrific night. I've absolutely loved being a part of celebrating such a great community. And I hope you guys have enjoyed watching live from home as well. Make sure you keep the comments and congratulations for our award recipients coming on social media. Remember to use the hashtag PaddleOzAwards20. Now, to take us out tonight, we've got some vision from our President's Award winner, the Australian Whitewater Grand Prix. Good night and keep on paddling.
Do you want to dance? dance.